everyone, in today's video I am going to teach you how to do vibrato on the ocarina. A lot of you have been wondering what the wobbly sound is that I'm doing or like the singing quality of it and that is vibrato. Before we get started, I did want to remind you that if you use my code GINA on the STL Ocarina website, you'll get 10% off your order. The ocarina that I am playing today is the Purple Clay Ocarina and this is a tenor ocarina in the key of C. So anyway, let's get started. So let me play a note with vibrato and without vibrato so that you can hear what that sounds like. And now with vibrato. And the cool thing about vibrato is that it can vary a lot. You can have fast vibrato, you can have slow vibrato, and eventually over time you'll be able to do that very easily and depending on what kind of music you're doing, you can change your vibrato to match it. When should you actually start vibrato on your instrument? A lot of people start vibrato too early and then it just messes up all of those original fundamentals and then you kind of have to start over from square one. So I would not advise starting vibrato too early. Definitely know how to produce a good sound on the ocarina and a steady sound. You should know all the fingerings by memory. If somebody says, play an A, play a B, you should be able to do it very easily. So know all those things before you start vibrato. Now I'm going to teach you how to actually produce vibrato. So you normally have an airstream and it's very straight and solid like this, right? So it's gonna sound like this. Now what I want you to do is go ha 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 ha. Okay, so that's what you're doing with your throat, ha 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 ha. And it's gonna sound like this. Now the more you do it, the more distinct it's gonna sound. Or the less that you do it, that, that was a little too much by the way, you don't wanna do that. But less vibrato would sound like this. And like I said, you can have varying speeds and depths of the vibrato. Think of the sound wave. So a normal note would go like this. Now if you did a very wide vibrato, it would go like this. If it was a very narrow vibrato, it would go like this. And then again, you have varying speeds. So you could have a wide vibrato that is very quick or very wide like this, or you could have a narrow vibrato that's very fast or very slow. So there's a lot of different options that you can choose from. And these are a couple tools that I use with all of my students to learn vibrato correctly. So the first thing that you want to do is get a metronome. You can have a physical metronome or there are a lot of free apps, metronome apps. I'll link one in the description below so that you can find it. And that's the one I personally use. What I want you to do is set your metronome to 60 and then you're going to play along with the beat with your vibrato. Make sure that you play it exactly with the metronome because that is what is going to make your vibrato even, which is what we want to do. Now keep increasing it by five. So from 60 to 65, 65 to 70, and then keep going up. And now I'm going to play it for you at 100 so that you can hear what that sounds like. Once you're able to do the vibrato at a faster tempo easily, you can go back down to the lower tempo and to let's say 60, and you can actually do two vibrato, if you will, and you do two per beat. Learning vibrato with the metronome is really important so that you're able to create an even vibrato. So, so important because you're gonna learn the skill and it's going to be really hard to reverse it in the future if you learn it incorrectly. So you need to learn it correctly from the very start. Remember earlier in this video how I talked about how there are different speeds and depths of vibrato? One exercise that I like to do with all my students is called the bouncy ball. So visualize a bouncy ball, okay? Let's say you drop it from a high place and you kind of throw it out a little bit. So at first it's going to be really big bounces that are traveling a really long distance and they're gonna be wide, okay? And then it's going to start going lower and it's not gonna have as much room to travel and it's gonna get quicker. So that's what we're going to do with our vibrato. So let me demonstrate it for you. And 
that basically just enables you to be able to move between different types and speeds of vibrato very quickly. So let's do that together. And reminder, just big at first, and then it gets quicker and smaller towards the end. Those are the two exercises that I would highly recommend for you to do at the beginning when you're learning vibrato. Anyway, I hope this helped you get started. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much to STL Ocarina for making this series possible. Make sure that you guys are subscribed to my YouTube channel so that you don't miss any of my future Ocarina videos. And you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and I'll see you next time.